Hello, and welcome to this new episode of Ward Round. I really enjoy this time. Because it allows me to communicate with you. And maybe for all those viewers who just started watching in the last weeks or days, I want to explain again why this Ward Round series is so important to me. Firstly, to give you awareness. Awareness in the direction that a disease is never a condition, but disease is a process. A process of the body that should push you to change something. If we doctors understand every disease as a condition, and if we offer therapies that are the same for everyone, if we don't care about their causes, which are sometimes not to be found in the body alone, but in life, where do I live? How do I live? Then you will see the same thing over and over again. It will lead the body into chronicity. It's frightening when I see that 70% of our diseases are chronic. Why? Because people are not allowed to find their way out. And because people are not accompanied enough on this path either. Because if you knew that there is a path behind everything that has happened in you and with you, then perhaps you could change these things more consciously. I would like to contribute to this to explain connections to you and the many inquiries that I received make it easier for me because I know where your worries are. This is the first thing. Secondly, that we maybe have to deal with something again that we may have lost a bit. That is the trust in ourselves. Trust in a divinity, and by that I don't mean a God who is responsible for everything somewhere or who means harm to me or sometimes no harm. I mean the divine in us. And I can also compare divinity with nature. That is the law, that is the great divine order that also rules in us. Who would even want to presume to ever understand hundreds of thousands of chemical reactions per second in a cell? So what we know today, and it is the year 2020, is very certainly only a fraction of what is out there. But in the course of my life, I learned to take a sentence very seriously. Anyone who doesn't believe a miracle is not a realist. I don't want to say that lightly. I just want to say that the treatment of a disease always starts with asking, what happened to me? Therefore, tumour is not an emergency. It took at least 10 years. And we should be open-minded in medicine. We do need different specialisations. That is out of the question. We should work together more because it always has to be about one thing. The goal has to be health. And we have to get involved early. Patients for themselves. And trust the power. Which strives to find the balance again. And therefore puts health on a new foundation. And we as doctors... We have to work together for a bigger cause. To bring the people back to stability and health. Because for me, it's really terrifying to treat children with osteoporosis or diabetes nowadays. I can't just accept that. There are reasons for this and doctors are also challenged there. And my third reason for this series is to help you find the desire 
to be responsible for your health. Of course, you are often tired of your illness. Of course, you may get into a certain passivity because the words were coming from a doctor's mouth were... Now there is nothing more to be done, but you will be rewarded for every effort. Sometimes it is not this absolute health, but improvement. It's the relief. A balance was found again. And that is my concern here today with this episode. And I wanted to tell you that again, before we start, because it is your questions and your worries and your wishes, and I want to live up to them with this Ward Round series. Now, let me start with a letter from a patient or a mother. And she describes that since January, her son is noticeably in poor health. With shortness of breath and a racing heart, he's hardly resilient and he's always tired. At the end of April, it was found in the clinic that he has very, very low haemoglobin. It's at 4.2. That's almost half the normal. If you have little haemoglobin, you can absorb less oxygen. That is actually the most important question, oxygen. When oxygen only reaches 50% of the cells, then the body is only 50% able to fulfil its duties. Dramatic for this young person. After a 14-day stay, nothing has actually been found. A pancytopenia was described, and pancytopenia means that all blood cells, including platelets and the white ones, which are responsible for defence, or even the platelets, the thrombocytes, for clotting, that pancytopenia draws conclusions about a bone marrow disorder. The boy was then given three blood bottles. It has now been replenished. And when she wrote me this letter, there was still a bone marrow puncture pending, the result of which I don't know. But this family not only has this newly ill boy, but they lost a daughter after a traumatic brain injury. I take it to be from an accident. And they also have a son who has neurosarcoidosis. Sarcoidosis is also a chronic inflammatory disease. The body is prone to granulomas, which are inflammatory papules. And if this is a chronic inflammation, of course, then there will always be a destruction. This means this is about the lungs. It's also about a generalised, and neuro means a nerve-affecting sarcoidosis. This means that tissue is degranulated and is therefore not fully functional. I understand the family's great worry, and now I'll take this as an opportunity to give you advice. I also read the test results from the clinic. And that's what we can do in a really great way today. We can see the current state of the organism. Actually almost analyse it with an electron microscope. We can do this through liquor punctures. We can do this with MRI and CT images. We do that, of course, through blood tests. This is an inventory that has been made. But now you have to think bigger. Because you already have two children who are seriously ill. Now we need a direct look, not only 
at the children, but also at the parents. You now need to look, take a look at your domestic and family situation. You have to take a look at the family environment. By that I mean that you have to look at the domestic environment to see how much toxicity there is. This toxicity can exist through the furniture, for example. You won't believe how many people that are exposed to formaldehyde become sick. This is actually the glue in the IKEA furniture. There are so many chemical and synthetic substances in carpets. At the moment, I have no insight into your living environment. And therefore, I just want to address a few things. Now, if someone is needed who examines your living space now or in the past in regards to building biology. You shouldn't underestimate mould. You shouldn't underestimate geopathic fields either. For example, electric smog, water veins. How big is the mobile phone use of the children? How big is the Wi-Fi usage? This means that the existing burdens that the children or your sons carry can be triggered very much. Electric smog is a fire accelerator for me, which gives the weak even less compensation. Another question is the toxicity of metals. Of course, it is true that today's crematoria have filter systems, which no longer direct or hurl mercury into the atmosphere. But for people who live near borders where other countries don't do that, it can be a big issue. It can also be a primary topic because you as a mother, you might have had a toxic load and both sons as firstborns had to tolerate a higher resilience here from the very first moment. We also have to have a look at detoxification. There are other things that may be toxic and I'm thinking of lead now for example lead which may be found in amalgam fillings quite inconspicuous but may also maybe you live in an old farmhouse and there are still old lead pipes lead settles in the bone marrow and we now know that about 500 to 1000 times more lead is found in human bones than it was 500 years ago. These are things that are incredibly important because you can't stop to assume or perceive that two children are already sick who were surely born healthy surely raised lovingly and nevertheless everyone tolerates different circumstances differently the other thing is of course to look at how we live now what is the health of the children in terms of their intestinal strain there is nobody who develops a chronic disease that is strongly rooted by a good state of their bowel. I see this again and again in children. They are only five or seven years old, but they have a dramatic bowel situation. That means apart from an imbalance in the intestinal flora, sometimes floods of candida due to the high consumption of sugar up to an inflammatory intestinal mucosa which very quietly regulates the immunity downwards. 
the immunity, and by that I mean we measure the so-called secretory IgA in the stool and see the state of the mucosal immunity at the moment. Less mucosal immunity would mean that already 80% of the child's immunity is not available. It's actually unbelievable that sometimes people with such a low immunity keep repeating, I'm actually fine, my digestion is fine. And then you examine that. And for me, that's the point where I say, we doctors have to prevent. We must ask people to have such examinations done once a year so that we can see earlier what happens when the mucosal immunity is low. The other question is how do you live? Do you live with animals? Do you have a dog because the children wanted a dog? Do you know what it means to have a dog? You have to use a dewormer twice a year. At least as far as I know, that's what you have to do in Germany. But if you use dewormer for the dog all the time, but not for yourself, what does that mean? That's not possible to stay worm free yourself while the dear furry friend lives with you in the house. It's sniffing around everywhere. It is a secondary carrier for toxoplasmosis for worms and much more, which of course have an effect on the mucosal immunity and dramatically overwhelm the immune system. There are also an incredible number of parasites. And it's about the big question, even with sarcoidosis. Which mechanisms fail? What a chronic inflammatory process can trigger itself again and again? Without the body ever being able to prevent it. And in such an emergency, and rightfully so, of course, you give anti-inflammatory drugs, including corticoids or immunosuppressants to reduce this inflammatory process. But it misses the cause. So I would ask that both of them and that the family is going on a big journey now to protect the children, but also to give them a chance to discover more and more what may be the cause as part of this process. And let me give you an example of why I think that way. There was a patient called Max. He had a long flight to Switzerland that lasted well over nine to ten hours and he was just a shadow of his former self. He had a very active lifestyle being a young person. He was 22 years old. He really wanted to have the muscles of a bodybuilder. Max was very intelligent. He wanted to go to university. But he overdid the exercising until he made a trip to Mexico and collapsed there. Long story short, Max came because he needed platelet extracts every month, so blood, because he lost his thrombocytes. These are the blood platelets that go immediately to an injury somewhere. Then they closed that wound and Max came and he was not in good shape. Couldn't eat anything, he had an unbelievable food intolerance. A histamine intolerance was hidden behind it. Max couldn't sleep, he was pale. And during this first stay, we actually mainly dealt with diagnostics. 
and I could show Max what was going on in his blood. He had enough platelets and in the beginning, I thought, there are enough platelets because of course he was given another blood bottle shortly before the flight. No, the platelets were sufficient before our eyes. But when I left the blood standing and kept watching it during the day, I saw that the platelets were changed and how the leukocytes, the own white blood cells, came and got rid of these platelets, which is what they have to do. Suddenly they recognised the healthy platelets as enemies. So this mechanism had taken place. Now the question was, what actually changes the blood milieu? That the platelets are changing. This is called the great polymorphism from Pre Professor Enderlein, who at the end of the 19th century worked as a professor of zoology and bacteriology at the Berlin Zoo and published hundreds of publications about this cyclogeny. And he was the first one who discovered it and wrote down his scientific studies. Max came several times. We did not succeed to stabilise the platelets during the first stay, but were able to catch the decline. This means he didn't need the transfusion again immediately after four weeks, but only after eight. The period was greater. Max came several times. Today, Max is healthy. Today, Max is at university. He went from, I think, 42 or 45 kilograms back then to 70, 75 kilograms today. And writes books and has matured tremendously as a young man. But what was behind it was a severe parasitosis. We say that extreme athletes bring down their immune performance to the lowest level. And that happened to Max too. That means they have the immunity of a tumour patient. Every patient has their own path. And I don't want to tell you now what the cause in your children could possibly be. But there is one. And today we are medically able to clarify much more than I can find in these examination results. Because when you ask yourself questions, you have to find those answers. And I can't find them. Therefore, I ask you to go and find environmental toxicologists, but also geopathologists, building biologists in your vicinity, who give you advice. All of this contribu contributes to a great process, which was certainly not created overnight, but very quietly, very inconspicuously, and therefore now needs to be looked at. And you really have to take a very deep look at it. I wish you all the best for this. And I hope from the bottom of my heart that it will help your sons. And I wish all the other viewers all the best. And look forward to next Sunday and your questions. Thanks. Dear viewers, the preceding episode is an indicator for a holistic medical approach and does not replace visiting your family doctor. Thank you.